I'm excited today, aren't you? Our Redeemer lives. Amen. Please greet those who are running about you in the precious name of Jesus. Just a reminder, today is the last day of um, bringing names forward. Um, the eldership are looking for new members on session. And uh, if you would like to nominate somebody, you've just got to get their signature. Papers are available there. And the box, today is the last day of voting. But, but don't worry, it's not like the American elections. Um, this is not about Trump and that other dude. Um, <laughs> And then um, your church needs you. We are seeking to really have a dynamic children's church. And so we would ask if, that if you prayerfully, uh, please pray, prayerfully consider being part of our children's church teaching team. And um, please join us after the service in the media room where we will be having a meeting to discuss the children's church. So I would please ask if you are prepared to participate in that very vital ministry that you just meet after the church in the media room next door. And then tonight, we begin the evening service. <laughs> I want to tell you that it's going to be awesome. It's going to just be time where we switch off, where we, where we draw nearer to God, become intimate with God. Children are welcome uh, I love children. I'd like them to be part of that tonight. Um, even the welcome, yeah, right now, please. <laughs> but what I'm trying to tell you is that it's really just going to be a wonderful and powerful service that we are starting tonight at what time again? 6 p.m., that's it. If you come at 7 o'clock, we're about halfway through. No, no, no. Uh, but <laughs> please join us tonight at 6 p.m. Then also just a reminder for those who would like to learn a bit more about Gateway and possibly considering membership, 
we will be starting our 5M orientation course um, on January the 28th, which is next Sunday. Please join me after the service as I tell you uh, a bit more, uh, a lot more about Gateway. And it will be running from the 28th of January to about the 3rd of March. How many of you would like to have victory in your life? Some of you are wanting to let go of those things that are holding you back. Maybe some of you want to really serve God, but, but you just feel that you're inadequate to do that. Well, can I encourage you? Come to the Walking in Victory course over the weekend of the 16th to the 18th of February. I can tell you right now, it's going to change your life. Maybe many of you find yourself in some kind of bondage. Maybe you feel like you've got chains around you. Well, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, will release you. So please join us on the 16th to 18th of February. Um, right over there is a board. Please will you put your names down. We start, we're starting to need numbers for that weekend. So if you can please just put your name down. And please, as I say, it will be the best weekend of your life and just a reminder that we have started an alpha course and please join us on thursday evening uh six for six thirty as we come together just to go on an adventure uh, we started that adventure this friday evening it was a great banquet and uh, if i can encourage if you would like to learn more uh, and you would like to discover more Come and join us on Thursday evening, uh, 6, 4, 6, 30 in the church hall. Yes, please. We'll do that. <laughs> All right. We just need your, your names for catering. If you could speak to me after, after the, the service and just give your name to me. Now I forgot what I was going to say. No, no. <laughs> I'm joking. But it's so wonderful to come into God's presence this morning. If you'd just like to stand and join me as we come to our call of worship and as we join in worship. Children of God, welcome. Please respond. Welcome to this place of love and grace. Welcome to this place of hope and perseverance. Let's respond. God invites all of us to be a part of the beloved community. God invites all of us to share in the good news. Let's respond. We are welcome just as we are. We are loved just as we are. In gratitude for all of this, let us worship God. Let's continue to worship our risen King. Come, people of the risen King, who delight to bring Him praise. Come, Lord. Tune your hearts to sing to the morning star of grace. From the shifting shadows of the earth, we will live a rise to Him. We're steady on top of reach to you gather children in. Oh 
We just want to praise you for, for this time that we can gather together as a community of faith. And we believe that Jesus, you are the hope of this nation. You are the hope of everyone, Father God. And we just pray that you will speak to those who haven't opened their, uh, their hearts to you. That, Father, they will let you in. For indeed, you are the hope of the nations. Jesus, hope of the nations, Jesus, comfort for all who mourn, you are the source of heaven's hope on earth, Jesus, light in the darkness, Jesus, truth in its earth. You are
of Jesus, the only name that person can get to heaven. No other name, no other way. And Jesus is a beautiful name, isn't it? Let's praise God. What a beautiful name. Bye. 
what a powerful name it is. And nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Lord, we want to honor you and we want to give praise for, your, for the salvation that we have received from you. Lord, you can move mountains. You are faithful to your promises. And we believe, Lord, in your name, you can make miracles. So, Lord, as we give this song to you, we just want to lift our voices and say, mighty to save, Jesus. You have the mighty to save. Take me as you find me, all my fears and failures. Fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I come to the preaching of your word we just pray father that the holy spirit will move around us within us that we will receive your word with humility and gladness in our hearts and we will submit to you lord and surrender our lives for you have done so much for us father we pray for pastor wayne that you will anoint your servant as he delivers 
the preaching of your word, Father, empower him with your Holy Spirit. And forgive us, Lord, for any sin that will hinder us from receiving blessings from your word. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we remain in an attitude of prayer, let us bow our heads once again and just come before God in prayer. Almighty God, we just praise and thank you for this awesome privilege of coming into the presence of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, as we come into your presence this morning, we are just so aware, Lord, that the world in which we live is just filled with so much chaos. Lord, as I stand here, my heart is broken for life's lost families that are being separated, and for children that see the horror of war. Lord, I just pray that your grace will come upon Israel and Palestine. Lord, you have said in the Psalms that we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And so, Lord, we just pray that your peace will reign over Jerusalem, Israel, and Palestine. Lord, may your grace come upon these nations. Lord, to we pray for the Ukraine and Russia. We pray, Lord, that you will defeat the bully Russia. And we pray that Ukraine, that seems like David at the moment may defeat the giant. We just pray, Lord, bring an end to that horror. Lord, we pray for women, for men and women and children in Islamic countries where they are being harassed and tortured by Sharia law, by Islam. Oh, Father, I pray that these nations may come to know the truth of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Lord, we pray for the Christians of Nigeria that are being persecuted and killed for their faith in Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that you will protect the Christians and that you will bring to light the evil of those Islamic forces that are destroying those who have faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, too, we bring South Africa before you and we just pray that you will be with our nation, especially this year as it comes to election time and where people are told all kinds of lies but wrapped up in sweet paper. And so, Lord, we just pray in Jesus' name that you will be with us in this year of election. And, Lord, we pray that you will bring a government in place that is not corrupt, but a government that's, that is godly, that stands for Jesus and stands for truth. Lord, we just pray your grace upon our nation. And Lord, I just pray your grace upon each one that is here this morning. Lord, I pray for those who may be feeling lonely, for those who may be feeling broken. Lord, I pray for those who may be sick this morning. Oh Lord, I pray that through the power and grace of your Holy Spirit, that you would just touch each one and that you would transform them with your wonderful love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In our sermon last week, I introduced you to the theme of unlocking the kingdom of God. 
A highlight of last week was that the kingdom of God, we were told, is like a classic VW Beetle. It is one of the smallest cars you will ever see. It is not very comfortable or powerful. It is not very stylish or practical. It is very cheap and not impressive in any way. There is no status with owning one. And yet, it is one of the most recognizable cars on the road. It grew from an idea to introduce a cheap mode of transport into Germany. It is popular beyond imagining. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a guy that rides around in, in Kempton Park. Uh, I think he's from Dazzle Remax. And uh, I don't know if you, uh, how many of you are, are from my uh, generation, but there used to be a, co- a car called Herbie. <laughs> that VW Beetle, and I see he has a similar one with number 53 written on it. But yet... The beetle went way beyond imagining. It it is loved and an integral part of social and sociological movements. It is a marketing miracle, a cultural icon. People may smile when they look at them, but they don't really laugh. They are a success story beyond expectation. For many people, it is actually the car of choice. I have a great honor and respect for God. And I also have a great respect for God's word. And to try and explain the kingdom of God to you in human terms is actually very challenging and very difficult. And so one has to use pictures or use stories um, that, that try to equate to us or try to explain to us what the kingdom of God is like. And I can tell you right now that indeed Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was also facing a challenge when he came and he was teaching people about the kingdom of God. And so he would use parables. A parable is a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson as told by Jesus in the Gospels. The first key to unlocking the kingdom of God is that we have to have faith. Just remember, faith is not something we attain completely overnight. It is a process that develops over time. As Jesus says, that it is like a mustard seed. A mustard seed is smaller than a pinhead, but grows into a massive tree. Consequently, no matter the size of our faith, it will enable the kingdom of God to grow in our lives. How many of you remember or know of Angus Buchan? What was his uh, book that he wrote? Faith Like Potatoes. And he got that from um, someone f- from, I, I just can't remember the author's name now, but he was from Scotland. Again, well done, Scots. <laughs> but the, the whole concept of Faith Like Potatoes is similar to talking about the mustard seed. You plant potatoes, They grow, you see the 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 top of the the potato, the plant, but we don't really know what's going on underneath. And then suddenly there's all these potato. Okay. But today I would like to introduce you to the second key. This morning I would like to introduce you to the second key of unlocking the kingdom of God. And so will you please Turn with me if you want to use your own Bibles on your phones or, or your Bibles, but you can follow um, on the screen behind me. But I'm going to be reading from John chapter 3, verses 1 to 21. John chapter 3, verses 1 to 21. John 3. Let us listen to the word of God. Now there was a Pharisee. A man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, 
Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can, he, how can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in Him. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God, and I love this verse, for God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. May God bless to us reading of his word. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray for the word. Heavenly Father, give us faith to receive your word, understanding to know what it means, and the will to put it into practice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The second key to unlocking the kingdom of God is the need to be born again. I have found a useful illustration on what it means to be born again. And guess what? I will again use the example of a classic VW Beetle. A VW wants to become a Cadillac and learns that it takes more than a mere emblem change to do it. It's like uh, I remember somebody once had a bicycle and it had BMW on it, but I can tell you it was not a BMW. <laughs> it was still a bicycle. It takes a trip to the refiner's fire to be, made, to be remade, poured out, and to be molded into 
the real deal. To be born again means that we need to change our perception on reality. Or to put it into computer language, we need to be reprogrammed. Especially in our understanding of our relationship with God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We need to understand, we grow up a certain way. We are taught a certain way in life. And, and we have, um, I almost want to say like lenses. So if you, if you grow up in a very traditional church and you grow up in a, in a religion, you, you tend to wear certain lenses and experience life through those lenses. Maybe you might not even grow up in the church and you may not even grow up in a religion, but you grow up in this world and you grow up in a certain way, and so you have a certain lens through which you see the world. And so what needs to happen is that when you come to Jesus Christ, and you realize that this life that you have lived is not what Jesus wants for you, what you need to basically do is to change the lenses. Okay, now I'm blind and I can't see, so I need to... <laughs> put my glasses back on, all right, but I need to put on different lenses, I need to see life from God's eyes, I need to see reality from God's eyes, he needs to reprogram the way that I think, the way that I experience life, we need to understand that the kingdom of God is here, and that we can only really understand the value of of the kingdom through a life-giving and loving relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior and by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We need to understand that I cannot live this life in my own strength. I cannot live this life doing things my way. Yeah, I, I mean, Frank Sinatra summed up life, yeah. He tried it his way. But you know, he ended up life in a very sad place. So you can do it your way. But life ends up in a very sad place. And so this morning, we need to program ourselves and focus on the kingdom of God. We need to focus on God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And when we have God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in our life, God gives us a life that is so different to the life we have in this world. I don't know about you, but this morning when I woke up, I saw a bright world out there. But you know, some people wake up and all they see is a dark world. But today is awesome. It's a day filled with life. And that's what Jesus Christ wants in you. He wants you to have life. And he wants you to have us. Have it abundantly. Paula Webster had been raised in a Christian home. She had been given a good Christian education and was settled down in what seemed to be a Christian marriage. She was active in her church, attended church conference, conferences, and even had regular Bible study times, personal Bible study times. She said that if anyone had asked her if she was a Christian, she would have said yes immediately and emphatically. Yet something was missing. She knew about God, but she sensed that she did not actually know Him. She felt frustrated and unhappy. And as far as her own spiritual life was concerned, she knew she was getting nowhere. I, I would say in many ways, I, I, I can understand where she's been. I've been in that place where I just felt my Christian faith was mediocre, that there was something missing. Does this describe your current state? As Paula studied the Bible, she was particularly drawn to David and Paul because 
each man clearly had a heart for God. They knew about God, but in addition, they each loved Him and wanted to obey Him as an expression of that love. As she studied their lives, she realized that something was wrong with her own heart, and she asked God to change her. And God did. He taught her that she had never really trusted in Christ alone. She had never really surrendered herself to God. She she was living out a religion and was not in a life-giving and loving relationship with God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yah are her own words and what happened. At that moment, I surrendered my life. At that moment, I surrendered my life entirely to God. I knew that He had heard me and accepted my surrender. I was conscious immediately that a great burden had been rolled away. I knew that I had been forgiven and cleansed. I knew that I had been changed. Peace like a great calm flowing a storm at sea and, and, and a joy unspeakable filled my heart. I knew that the great war within had ceased. You see, when we don't truly understand God and when we try to live out of a religion, we get frustrated with life. We get frustrated in our walk with God because we feel that we constantly have to do stuff to attain God's acceptance. We feel that we have to do virtually everything that, that, that Paula did here. But somehow we feel something is missing in our life and we get frustrated. But you see, when we surrender our heart and our life to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and we understand that the battle is not mine, but the battle is the Lord's, and we realize that He has fought that battle, that He has defeated the devil on the cross of Calvary, we come to understand that the battle belongs to the Lord. And when we come to that point and we surrender ourselves to Him and say, Lord, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me, that burden, <laughs> that burden of frustration will be lifted from you. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. Paula, like Nicodemus, was caught up in a religion and not a relationship with God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is only when you are in a true relationship with Jesus Christ that you will truly understand the reality of the kingdom of God. What is the difference between a religion and a relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? Religion can be very different than having a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Religions are a human creation and are based on trying to get to God through rules and regulations and good works. How many of you have tried that? Have you succeeded? I know I fail <laughs> hopelessly. All human created religions are based on people's religious efforts at reaching to God and being made right with Him through their own religious efforts. But God's plan for humanity, for humanity's salvation and for having a restored personal relationship with Him is told through the Bible. In the Old Testament and the New Testament alike, God's plan is not, bla is, is not based on our efforts and our good works. His plan is based on His amazing love and amazing grace for us in Jesus Christ our Lord 
and Savior. How many of you know Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound? It's an old, old hymn, but we don't really understand it unless we know the story of John Newton who wrote it. He considered himself the worst sinner. He was a ship's captain of, of slave ships. He, 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 he worked in, in taking people from Africa to America to England. And one day he was caught up in a storm at sea and he thought he was going to die. And he asked God into his life. When God came into his life, he realized what he was doing. And when he got back to England, he ended up being a pastor. I don't know if you've ever watched the movie Amazing Grace. And it's, the, it's a scene where William Wilberforce, he, he is the man who is credited for bringing an end to slavery in England. And there's a, there, there are a few scenes where he goes to, this, to that um, cathedral in London. What's it called? St. Paul's Cathedral. And there's this... Um, this priest, this busy um, with a broom cleaning out the cathedral. And you know who it is? It's John Newton. As you see of what he went through, he, 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 were, he was a broken man. And then he realized that he needed Jesus in his life. And when he re realized this amazing grace of God, he could only serve God. And the interesting story about Amazing Grace was that he would, used to have a um, <clears throat> Bible study on a Wednesday over tea, and they would always have a hymn, and he'd always have a new hymn, and he wrote Amazing Grace before this Bible study. And it's a hymn that not only changed his era, but is changing our era today too. Still is, because we recognize God's amazing plan, God's amazing grace, God's amazing love. God's plan involved his precious son, Jesus, paying the price and cost for our sins on the cross. You know, we, we tend to have a memory, but God has a forgettery. Did you know that? People sin against us. Boy, do we remember it. <laughs> Ask me when you're fighting with your wife. You always remember stuff she did to you. Lord, forgive me. Um... <laughs> But you know that God has a forgettery. When you come to him and you say, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned. He says, for what? <laughs> it's been paid for. On the cross. You see, you and I need to put all our trust and faith in Jesus Christ. And what he has done for us on the cross. Not in any religion or church or in any of your own efforts. If you put all of your trust and faith in Jesus, repent from your sins and commit to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And then you will experience the joy of a right love relationship with God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Many people out there have tried everything on their own strength. People have tried to live an abundant life. People have tried to live a life that is set free from the bondages of this world. But I can tell you right now, they have failed. You and I, if you and I really want to experience life and, and, and live it abundantly, we need to surrender our lives to Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I see life completely differently when I look at life through the lens of God's eyes, life is beautiful. <laughs> you know, sometimes <clears throat> when, when um, I get frustrated with taxis on the highway, God reminds me quite, quite a few times he loves them too. <laughs> <laughs> and then I feel like a total idiot afterwards. <laughs> Maybe there are many people out there that are <laughs> a pain to you. But just remember, Jesus loves them too. <laughs> Finally, Michael Walter, G. 
which is a beautiful illustration about being born again. A number of years ago, he writes, I had the opportunity to tour the Villaroy and Bosch porcelain factory in Tachau, Germany. Porcelain is one of the most beautiful and enduring things that human beings can make. Even today, much of what we know about ancient cultures comes from what they made from clay. He writes, I was presented with a beautiful gift of a flower vase. Was it vase? <laughs> Sorry, I just like to listen. A vase that is painted with these letters. V-D-M-I-A, with a silent E. Um, they stand for the Latin words, verbum de manet in etonum. <clears throat> Not bad for a guy that just knows Greek. Verbum de manet in etonum, <laughs> which means the word of God endures forever. What a beautiful inscription of a flower vase. The flowers are constantly being removed and thrown away. Their beauty only lasts a while, but the beauty and love of God and His Word lasts forever. With this truth, Peter shows us what we need. Peter says that we are born again by the, imp by the impressionable, living and abiding Word of God. He writes this in 1 Peter 1. And how? What does that really mean? The word of God is the truth. It is the truth about our sins and the truth about God's forgiving love. That word is the gospel truth of Jesus Christ. When Jesus obeyed as no one has ever done before, and when he died innocently as no one had ever done before, he took the love-killing, death-dwelling sin of this world away from us to give us a new life. When we repent of our sin and believe in God's word, his love in Jesus Christ allows a dramatic transformation to begin in our lives. It is so dramatic that it can only be called a rebirth. Notwithstanding, my friends, have you unlocked the second key of the kingdom of God in your life? As I close, I'll leave you with this thought. The opening lines of a poem by Louisa Fletcher expresses this nostalgic wish. I wish that there were some wonderful place called the land of beginning again, where all our mistakes and all our heartaches and all our poor selfish grief could be dropped like a shabby old coat at the door and never be put on again. One of the staples of life is that in moments of weakness or poor judgment, we say and do wrong, hurtful things. In marriages, friendships, work associations, and other relationships, our actions sometimes give offense or harm to others. Or we may have sinned against the Lord and be at odds with our own consciences. Wouldn't it be fine if we could just start over? Turn back the clock, rewind the tape, erase the error, or however you like to think of it. It is what David fervently desired as he cried, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew my a right spirit within me. Psalm 51 verse 10. Is there a person anywhere who has not wished for this very thing? The good news, the gospel of Christ is like discovering a land of beginning again. And access to it is easily obtained. Jesus told Nicodemus, a Jewish leader who came to Jesus, you must be born again. The new beginning Jesus offers is so thorough that he speaks of it as a new birth. Or a new birth or a rebirth. 
Paul wrote about this to the Corinthian converts. And with this I close. Now we look inside. And what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start. Is created new. The old life is gone. And a new life burgeons. Look at it. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we come into your presence this morning, we just once again thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you, Lord, that in Christ we have been redeemed, that in Christ we have been set free from the bondages that hold us and that keep us from you. Thank you, Lord, that we do not have to come into your presence by our own efforts, but that all we have to do is repent and believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And so, Lord, help us this morning to unlock that second key. Remind us once again, Lord, that you have called us into relationship and not religion, that you have called us to life and not death, that you have called us to abundance and to victory. So Lord, this morning I just pray for those who may want to recommit themselves or who want to commit themselves this morning to Jesus Christ. And so Lord, I pray that as I pray this prayer, Lord, that each one may invite Jesus Christ into their heart and that he may steer their lives. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd just like to ask the worship team to come up now and to lead us into... Uh, our song and then uh, after the song we will do the offering and I pray that as we bring our offering before God that we not only offer him our money but that we offer our lives and give our lives to him let's stand and worship together Your blood 
Let us now bring our offering to God. Let's pray for our offering. Dear Lord, we come once again to you. We want to thank you, Lord, for this day. It has been such a blessing that we, you gave us the opportunity to come and sit in your house and hear the word. So, Lord, we come back to you now to give thanks and we bring what you have given us back to you and we ask you, Lord, to bless it again and to multiply it so that, Lord, it will be used in your house. Lord, I want to thank you for each and everyone that has uh, stretched their hands to, to give back to your house. Bless them, Lord, and be with them and multiply their gifts and give them life in abundance. Thank you once again, Lord.
for this gift that is be available to you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder, tonight the evening st service starts at 6 p.m. Also, just a reminder, if you would love to do the Alpha course, it is a life-changing course. Uh, there's still place available on Thursday, 6 for 6.30. Please speak to me or to Fiona uh, after the service. Thank you for sharing in our service of worship this morning. I hope that you have been blessed, and I pray that as you go into this new week, that you will experience God's grace, peace, and love. Let's stand as we, as I sing to you, uh, as I sing to you, I'll try and sing a melody on my own, um, <laughs> uh, my role's finished there, um, <laughs> but I'll just give you the blessing, and then we will close with the Our Father. Almighty God, we just praise and thank you for your love and grace to us, we praise and thank you that your grace is, con is constantly upon us, but Lord, above all, we thank you for your amazing love to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we indeed pray that as we go into this new week, that we will bring praise, glory, and honor to your most wonderful name. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us, and hope to see you next Sunday and tonight. <laughs> Don't forget. <laughs> okay, blessings everyone. We're going to sing the Lord's Prayer. If you want to join us, feel free. It's a new version of the Lord's Prayer. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sin against us. Forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Oh, let your kingdom come, Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us his Forgive us as we forgive the ones who sin against us. Forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Oh, let your kingdom come. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours, forever and ever. The kingdom is yours. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. It's yours. Let your kingdom come, Father. Let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come, Father. Let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. On earth as in heaven, right here. Everyone.
everyone and enjoy the tea and coffee. And if you need prayers, the, the elders are here to pray over you. Thank you for worshiping with us. Let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day of daily bread, forgive us. Forgive us as we forgive the ones who sin against us. Forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Oh, let your kingdom come. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven. Let your kingdom come, Father. Let your will be done. Let us in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day of daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us, as we forgive the ones who sin against us. Forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but deliver. Let your will be done. 